Hello, very glad you could join us. This is of the press, where we'll bring you the major headlines from the national dailies. I am Benny R. Kim will be in the studio to analyze major headlines of public affairs analyst Dr. Femi Adigoke and the policy analyst Ifi Oji. Good morning to you, madam. Good morning. Good, good morning, morning, Femi. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Good morning. Let's get into the dailies immediately and see the news making the headlines. We start off firstly with the Vanguard newspaper. It's illegal to pass hate speech bill, Falana tells the National Assembly, and that is on page 11 in the Vanguard newspaper. Reps raise 2020 budget estimates by 260 billion naira and they pass money bill today. You find that in page 9 in Vanguard newspaper. Buhari Obaseki orders paid tributes to David West. Veteran journalist Mac 160 years of profession in Nigeria. Federal government cripples monopoly of discourse unveils new electricity distribution policy and that is on page 19 in Vanguard newspaper. Governor's Jumbo Pension Court orders federal government to tackle state government's pension laws. And that's on page 5 in the, in the, punch, in the Vanguard newspaper. Gas explosion rocks Lagos Hotel, many injured. And page 6 right here this morning. Security threats, Almagiri system, a time bomb, says Buhari. Interesting, that is coming from the president. <laughs> Late Beko's wife, Abbasadeh, dies at 74. And more in the Vanguard newspaper this morning. You will see the real Anthony Joshua talking about the rematch between Anthony Joshua and Rios. We're all looking forward to that match. And CAF Awards 2019, Igalo makes 10-man shortlist of Sime Chukweze in YPOP Top 5. Security threat, al system, a time bomb, says President Mohamed Buhari. Can we start with that this morning? Okay. Okay, let's start with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I, was, I had a look at the, uh, I think that was at the launch or the passing of the new national security uh, strategy. Yes. Where the uh, national security advisor, General Major General Amongono, mentioned that the al system in the north it's a time bomb it's a is an is a security problem and that has been security problem for as long as i have been born yeah but it's been neglected but it's good it's coming from uh the national security advisor and the president is in a agreement with him it's good enough to talk about it but they have to look for a way to now cop it because okay. these are kids who don't go to school they don't have any form of education than to go to the Quranic uh, masters and they fed for themselves by begging on the streets. And they are very, they are tools in the hands of anyone who wants to cause mischief. Mm. We know what the Almagiri system is costing the North when it comes to religion and ethnic uh, wars or disagreement. They just give these kids little things and they go around burning houses, burning churches. I lived in the north at the, po at the point where these issues was very rampant. So it's coming from them now, it's good, but what are they going to do? Because I remember the former, the last administration tried to have a, both formal education and the Islamic education schools around the north. Yes. I don't know how far that's gone. If you any thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll just, just, just to buttress to, um, what uh, Doctor has just said, I yes. think it's important uh, that the current um, moves to ensure that um, there's a redress of the balance in terms of uh, just lessening poverty in the North might uh, hopefully help to eradicate, eradicate some of the issues that are being spoken about. Uh, I know that Nigeria right now is on a really bad burn poverty on, on the poverty scale, an indicator from the World Bank that yes. we're, we're, we're ranking really, really low. And I think that having some kind of, or having some sort of um, financial infusion or including, or financial include, inclusion from um, citizens from the north might help to, um, to address some of these issues. All right, amazingly, in page 31 in um, Vanga newspaper, Olufasan said the Buhari government anti-poverty policy lacks a coherent approach. It's merely palliative, failing to reduce extreme poverty. Would you mm -hmm. want to share his thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, I read somewhere that when you try to control everything, you're not doing anything. You do not get the, the desired result. I agree with what the uh, what uh, Lufasan has said there, because for our economy to grow, we need to open up the economy. You can't control the forex, control everything, and expect the economy to grow. 
it's not going to grow. We're going more, more into poverty. We saw what happened in Ghana, I think, uh, just two days ago. Uh, the envoy, Nigerian envoy, has said a thousand Nigerian stores in Ghana were shut down, attacked because of the closure of the border. So you cannot continue to close your own economy and expect it to grow. You want to say something, Evie? Uh, no, I was just going okay. to. Um, unfortunately, I don't necessarily agree with what Doctor is saying. I, okay. I understand that yes, there are going to be issues with the border closure, and I know that the issues that are spoken about in Ghana are much deeper and have much uh, are more symptomatic of uh, Nigerians. Uh, the crime rates of, of um, amongst the Nigerian population in Ghana. In Ghana. Yeah. So a lot of the new crimes that they are um, that in terms of the statistics are actually perpetuated by Nigerian citizens. Unfortunately, so that's actually more or less more what the issue is in Ghana. Have, also speaking about what he's talking about in terms of financial inclusion, I know that it may not be perfect, but I know right now that so, many, so much effort is being made. In fact, our ease of doing business ranking, where we are up by 15 points, is act, one of the indicators was, it was access to credit. So we jumped up literally about 40% from our previous year. So that means that there is... At that, what interest rate? Huh? At, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. So if you look at it, you know, I think you, you guys have, have basically looking at it from a, a much smaller uh, kernel. Okay. If you look at it from a bigger perspective, looking at MSMEs, yes. looking at um, nano credit systems, looking at just widening that net you begin to realize that there are actually efforts have been made more in and why would why would I mean, why would an investor come in so with you, top you agree with the million? fact that there are no palliative measures in the long run it's going to be beneficial to the yes I feel like okay. in the long run it's going to be beneficial, beneficial. yes all right let's go quickly move to this day newspaper Moody Moody's changes Nigeria's ratings from stable to negative affirms B2 ranking says Nigeria banks reducing NPL's lowest capital erosion erosion risk and that's on page five in this day newspaper Senate increases 2020 budget by 450 billion naira. Passes bill today. Page six, right here in this day newspaper. Court says 21 state billions orders AGF to recover pension from ex governors. Akbabio, Aimechi, Shatima, Goje, 10 orders affected. And Fashola, Silver, Aribishola yet to draw benefits. Edo crisis worsens as Assembly declares 12 seats vacant. And still in this day, showing car disobedience to court orders is thuggery. And that's on page five in this day newspaper. Illusion of a food pack economy. Anybody on this day this morning? Um, I'll just go on to just a, a continuation of what I had spoken about in terms of an, uh, access to credit. Okay. And Moody's, uh, Moody, Moody's, Moody's uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Moody's is basically like an a, a indicator system of how uh, we're doing in terms of our um, ability to... Uh, the, the credit rating agency. Exactly, yes. the credit rating agency. Yeah. So yes, yes, I had already mentioned earlier on that we, we are trying to ex widen our net in terms of access to credit. But in the, in the, in the core of it, where you have um, small to medium, uh, uh, medium to large loans, uh, I know that the non-performing loans that are in the, in the, in the system already are, are, are what they are, what are they are using to make these um, ratings, yes. uh, to rank us from stable to negative. Sorry. I think okay. Well, I, I want to talk about the court. Okay, yeah. please. Yes. Say in 21 states. 21 states, yes. Billion orders AGF to recover pension from ex yeah. First of all, yeah, I'd like to say thank you to Serap. Serap has been on this case since 2017, and they've been in court. They've written to the AGF, that's the Attorney General of the Federation, and nothing has been done from his office. Now they've gone further. And another thanks to Justice Ogunto Imbo who's taking it up and he said, Seraph's argument is right. And then the AGF should institute a case against the ex governors. You cannot have 21 states. In a poverty stricken country like Nigeria, you have governors taking pension mm. from the parts of the state. Zamfara State that brought this back to uh, the front burner of the news was said to be servicing ex-governors with over 700 million mm. annually. And Zamfara State, what is their revenue? What are they bringing to the table? So the, it's, it's sick for us to have leaders of such after leaving office. And uh, uh, in that case, you find that most of them are now in the Senate. And they are taking double emoluments. Mm. And it's, 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 this is criminal for me personally. I don't feel reform alone is good. It's good to reform. But we need to begin to punish them either jail sentence or even total uh, take them out of the system and then bar them from the country. It's true, because a lot of people have lost their lives. There are people who serve 
the civil service for 25, 30 years, and they're struggling to get their pension. Yes. Okay. And you become governor for eight years, and then you're getting that fat pension. And you, the Zambra the, the uh, Yari, or what's his name, had the effrontery to even write to the present governor that he had not received from, 20, uh, from July. It's, 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 it's good. Thank you for the people who are quite standing up for us. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I definitely yeah. share in his sentiments. I don't know if, I think I would lean more towards uh, uh, some kind of um, um, trying to punish the administ administ people that are administering the loans more than actually the governors themselves. Because okay. if people are handing you money, you're definitely going to take it. You know, oftentimes, but we need to also point out that even within this um, system that is not uh, in our favor or generally in the favor of the citizens of Nigeria, that you have people like Fashola, Arebosola, and uh, Silva that are yet to receive that because they know a morally conscious, they, they took a morally conscious stand to ensure that at least the money is still. That, that, they, that they make a um, statement by not taking up those pensions. I think that's important for us to point that out as well. All right, quickly, we'll take a look at the nation newspaper this morning. Senators rep raised 2020 budget and passes likely today, and that's on page 11 in, in the nation newspaper. FEC okays $4 billion for Oshunkwa roads, $825 billion for Elisha Oshogbo road, page 10 in the nation newspaper. And in entertainment in the nation, Bono Boy leads Apple's 2019 top 10 David Doe Whiskey Trail. Court to federal government recover pension from ex governors. Judge orders AGF to compel ex governors servicing as ministers, senators to reform pension cash. Contractors to get 30% mobilization. Kingpin 26 orders arrested at Yahoo Boys Den in Lagos. MST contractor run away with mobilization fees, says Dokubo. And still in nation this morning, defective mothers damage the nation. Well, that's an opinion piece right here in the nation newspaper. Senators rep raised 2020 budget and passes likely today. Can we bother on that a little bit? Well, I've not, I've not read the story, but okay. the truth is, why are they raising the budget? <laughs> See, the, the, the problem we have in Nigeria, we all, everybody seems to know. Our revenue is shrinking, mm -hmm. and then our expenditure is going up, and then we're going to sink more in poverty. Mm -hmm. If you're not any, you're, what, what the National Assembly for me should be even downsized. They're too much, and then we're going to service this. This will go on the budget, and now if they pass the budget, will the president assent to it? Because I he's going to there's going to be issue with them uh, knowing Mr. President for who he is. It, there's going to be issue with the, uh, what they're adding up. If I'm, I'm, ju I'm just curious yes. to find out where this money is going to come from, okay. to be honest. Also, the, uh, looking at it also from a, a, a larger perspective as well, you find that, um, that you have other bills like the Digital Rights and Freedom Bill yes. that has taken three years, three years through the Senate, back and forth, back and forth, and they were not able to pass that, which is actually really crucial yes. to our future. Yet... Monies to and um, um, bills to, to raise our budget is, is, is easy to pass, and uh, that, would, that would lead us to an, uh, a budget deficit is, is easy to pass in a in, 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 in matter of weeks. So it shows that our, 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 our priorities are obviously not in the right place. It's not in the right place. So, uh, yeah, I agree with what um, Dr. Dr. said. Yeah. And lastly, with us this morning, we'll go through the Punch newspaper, NNPC, DPR, FIRS. Illegally deducted 1.5 trillion naira, says Auditor General, and that's in page 30 in the Punch newspaper. Federal government tra treating judiciary with disdain by disobeying orders, while well, issuing car and court orders AGF to recover 40 billion pensions from ex governors. And this is across all the dailies this morning we have with us. Ghanaian shut 1,000 Nigerian shops over border closure, says the envoy. NSA raises fresh concern. ACF leader knocks governors. This Almagiri phenomenon, which we have been talking about, we cannot continue to push it under the carpet. Eventually, it will come back to bite us in the Damn. butt big time. Mm -hmm. Senate rejects Oshun Rek nominee over APC membership and bandits attack Niger district head, kill 11, abduct mm. 6. Hate speech bill is dead ready, says Oyedikbo. And federal government to arraign Ifan Yuba for 135 billion Nava debt. Gas explosion rocks Lagos Hotel in just seven. And lastly, in the Punch newspaper with us this morning, Buhari fails to host national honors in five years. What should we bother upon from um, the Punch newspaper this morning, Ify? 
Um, I'll just look at, um, maybe you should look at um, the NNPC, DPR, FIS. Yeah. Uh, I have not really, uh, I mean, we've already talked about the Ghanaian shops, yes. uh, Nigerian shops. And, and what about um, the, 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 the comment coming from Wallace showing how the federal government treated judiciary with disdain by the Supreme Court orders. And that should be in regards to Shoare and yeah. its, and, its and, um, orders. and others who were yeah, still detained despite court orders to, yeah. to release them to grant them bail. I think it's just showing that there's a he, he's right. There is a t disdain for uh, for the judiciary system. Yes. Well, Lesho Inka is right. I just feel like uh, we're supposed to have a balance of powers in Nigeria, and they, obviously the three arms of government are supposed to be absolutely yeah, they're supposed to be uh, they're supposed to checks and balances as well within those three arms of government within. And for whatever reason, judiciary is always seen to be the uh, step step brother of the other two mm -hmm. um, arms. Doctor Gugu, yeah. Um, on uh, the disdain for court holders, uh, I think we said here yesterday or the day before yesterday, when uh, our Attorney General was talking about impunity, for me, the, the federal government is number one when it comes to impunity in power for not respecting court orders. And it's not only about Shore, we know some, some people that have been there since 2016, 2017, and court has asked them to go on bail and they, they've not. I don't know what security uh, threat these people are to the country that Nigeria cannot deal with. You can obey the court order and look for a way to rearrest them if you feel that they're not the security threat. Mm -hmm. At least obey the court order, then go back to court. And then let's, let you, the government should be seen as you know a process, not just muscle everybody to one corner. I, I totally agree with uh, Professor Wolesho Inka on that, and I'm an advocate of uh, justice as well. So. I'll quickly, in just a minute, um, if, if you will, hate speech bill is dead already, as says Ojidipo, a cleric. Let me, let me pick, your, let me pick your, your brain on the hate speech bill. What, what are your thoughts on it? I, dead I, already? Sorry, go on. He said um, that the hate speech bill is dead already. That's what the cleric well, I said. I mean, obviously, but, it's not necessarily yeah, we want it to be. We want it to die. In fact, okay. the sooner it dies, the better. Yeah. I, I feel like uh, we're, we're really, again, just lost priorities in Nigeria in terms of what we should be trying to enact and put forward to 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 um, to, to help our progress in Nigeria. Uh, why would you look at things that would censor us and look for new? With, it doesn't matter what you call it. You can put a lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Mm -hmm. And so you need to make sure that you look at the actual finer details of the bill itself. Again, I'm going to go refer back to the Digital Rights and Freedom Bill. It's very important that we are, we are looking at expanding and protecting the rights of each and every one of us in terms of uh, what, what data that they're able to um, get, get, get from us online. That is what our priority should be. Censorship, not censorship. Protection, not censorship. Thank you, Ifi. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. And that's more time we're allowed to take this morning on Off the Press. It's always a pleasure to have you on the program, and thanks for coming. And you want to stay with us? Still more coming your way at this where we're going to wrap it up. Join us again tomorrow by 8.30 a.m. Do have a great day.